Hello everyone. My name's Daniel and I'm a product specialist here at Hornbill. In this short video I'm going to take you through how to configure your organisational structure. This is a facility that is designed to allow you to represent the business units such as companies, divisions, departments and teams that exist within your organisation. Please note that the organisational structure is not designed to store details in relation to any external customer organisations that you might interact with as part of your operations. This is stored elsewhere and will be discussed in a separate video. The organisational structure that you'll create could be considered an element of foundation configuration. Now the term foundation configuration is a term that I like to use to describe configuration that is relevant to the platform as a whole. What you create here will be available to the various applications that you install on the platform, not just one particular app. For that reason, you'll find the organisational structure in the context of the system tile within Hornbill administration. Clicking system, organisational data and then organisation will take you to the screen where we'll begin configuring our organisational structure. In Hornbill terms, the various business units such as companies, divisions, departments and teams are referred to generically as groups and we will create a series of groups to represent each of these business areas. To create a group, simply click the Create New Group button to the top right of the list. When we create a group, we are asked to provide some simple information. Firstly, we provide an ID. Now this field or this value cannot be changed after we've created the group, so a small amount of consideration should be given. We give a group name. Now this can be edited and amended in future, so if you make a mistake, never fear, we can come back and adjust accordingly. The group structure that we are creating is of sorts a hierarchy. We can nest groups beneath other groups. Hence, we have the ability to specify a parent group. The first group you'll create will be the top of the tree, so it's not necessary to select a parent. While the Hornbill group type suggests a hierarchy, there's no restriction on how the group types are applied. So for example, a group type of company could have a parent group also of type company, and equally, a group of type company could have a parent of group type department. This doesn't make an awful lot of sense, but technically it's possible. While a group type is relatively insignificant in terms of the hierarchy or tree structure that you're representing, it is important to Hornbill applications from a functional perspective. For example, in relation to Service Manager, only groups of type team can be assigned tickets. You could not assign tickets to a group of type department. The final consideration when creating a new group is whether or not to allow task assignment. It's best to approach this quite simply. For any group of type team, enable task assignment. For all the other group types, such as company, cost center, division, etc., leave this disabled. You can always come back at a later date if you find a use case or reason to enable it for these group types. Now that we've looked at how to create a new group, it's time to consider how extensive your organization structure needs to be. Depending on your needs, there may be little value in spending time creating a structure to represent the hundreds of departments and teams that exist within your organisation. To get started with Hornbill, the minimum recommendation is to create a structure consisting of three groups. Firstly, a group of type company to represent your organisation as a whole. A group of type department to represent the business function who will be using the platform. This may be to represent HR or IT. And then within this department, you'll define your teams. This basic structure will allow for growth or change in future should you decide that you need to define something more extensive. There are two factors that will largely determine if you need something over and above the minimum recommended. Now these factors come from Service Manager. If you don't have Service Manager installed, then these considerations won't be applicable. The first consideration relates to service subscriptions. Service subscriptions are a mechanism that control whether a customer has access to a service. If you have a need to restrict services to users that belong to a particular business unit, then this suggests that you need to define this business unit within your organisational structure. If all the services that you create are going to be offered across the organisation, then this consideration can be ignored. The second consideration relates to reporting. If you have a need to produce reports detailing volumes of tickets per business unit, then this will necessitate the creation of a more detailed organisation structure to support the reports that you currently output. 
If you're still unsure of your needs around service subscription or reporting, start with a minimum recommendation, a group of type company, with a group of type department beneath, and then your relevant teams sat within that department. As said previously, this should allow for growth and adjustment if in future you decide that you need more. Once you've created some groups, the next step is to associate your users. I hope you find this video useful. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to jump on the forums to discuss further. Thanks for watching.